lot of people coming out and condemning Biden after the angry speech that he gave, calling Trump supporters a threat to democracy. He since sort of walked back those comments, kind of gave an apology. I talked about it in a separate video, but I want to address here one of the individuals that called him out here for the speech because, well, they were singing another tune once uh, Biden was uh, officially named the winner of the election. We'll get into it here about Franklin Graham in less than 10 seconds. First, guys, if you could, if YT lets you, try and hit that like button for me. Very important also, you please share the video. That helps us get around the algorithm here. Hit the bell, subscribe, I wear the glasses because I'm blind. And guys, if you could help donate here to the ministry, support what I do, see more info in the description. So Franklin Graham, you know, I, I just... Where do I start with this guy? He puts out a post on his Facebook, right? And he's he's going at Biden too, calling the speech divisive. You know, remember, you know, you guys heard this, right? He's called the Trump supporters fascists and a threat to democracy, you know, all of this. Just sounding like a pure dictator because that's exactly what he was. And, you know, he came out the next day and tried to walk that back because they realized, oh no, that probably wasn't a good idea to do that. You know, when people were calling this, you know, one of the most disgusting speeches by an American president in history, and I, and I said this before when I talked about this, I'll say it again, there will be more. This will not be the last, okay? <laughs> you are going to be hearing many more speeches like this, but uh, they're going to start to turn towards taking aim at Christians. So Franklin Graham came out and said that, you know, how could you further divide the country? How could you call people who support the former president extremists when all they want is freedom and liberty and they want, you know, they want law and order. You know, they want all these things. How, you know, small government. How does that make us extremists? He says that President Biden is just further dividing us. And Graham went on here to talk about, you know, Ronald Reagan wanted those things. He wanted to make America great again. Does that make him an extremist too? No. So if you didn't know the history of Graham, you could take his post here and say you agree with it completely. Nothing wrong with the words. I mean, everything that he's saying is true, but 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 who is the real Franklin Graham? Oh, I'll get to that in a second, guys. First, let me put a quick plug in for my Patreon. This is how you guys can help support the ministry. Plus, look, if you guys only watch these videos through YT Alerts, you miss a ton of content. You want to never miss a video? Sign up on the Patreon for five bucks a month. You get alerted for all the content I put out. You can even comment there censorship free. Send me direct messages. I get no monetization here on this channel. So this is my only way of letting you guys know how you can help support the ministry. Uh, you can even help out over on PayPal as well. So check it out. All the links are down below. A big thank you to everybody already contributing and those thinking of doing so. Thank you as well. Your generosity is greatly appreciated. But let's go back to when, you know, Biden was first elected as president back in 2020. You had Franklin Graham, who came out at the time and had demanded that all Christians would give Biden a chance. Give him a chance. Now, I called it out at the time because I said, why should we give someone a chance that we know is firmly in the pocket of Satan? Why should we give someone a chance that is firmly in the pocket of Moloch? Why? Oh, why? Because he's a Catholic? No, he's not. I'm blind. I can see this. So many others can see this as well. And you would think that Franklin Graham would see it as well. Did he honestly think, this is a legit question, did he honestly think that Biden was somehow going to be this great leader? That he was going to have this come to Jesus moment while in the Oval Office? get on his hands and knees and cry out to the Lord for his salvation. Did he really think that? This is a so-called evangelist, the son of Billy Graham, right? He's got, you know, he, he runs Samaritan's Purse and all these other, you know, organizations. Give me a break. This is a guy who uses religion, Catholicism. That's the, you know, the chosen religion of Biden and Pelosi and all these other fakes and phonies out there, right? But no, Graham was telling Christians to give him a chance. <laughs> what did that chance get us? 
forced jabs, high inflation, gas prices, an open border, a debacle in Afghanistan. I could go on and on and on. How about the beginning of the New World Order? Graham knew exactly what Biden would bring to the table. Let's also not forget this, that Graham, even I'm talking months ago here, was saying that he would do everything in his power. This is important to work with the Biden people to get jabs out there to as many Christians as possible. Why? Because of Graham's ability and his position in the faith community. He even said it. The White House reached out to Graham. Can you help us reach out to churches, to other Christians, other denominations? Help us spread the word about getting the jab out there and the importance that it is for Christians to take it. And Graham said that he would gladly do that. Anything he could do to help. And we saw what that brought upon people. Let's not forget Graham himself had heart surgery months ago. I think we know why, right? But yet, every time he was asked the question about the pinchy pinch, he promoted it. Said that he got it, got his booster, said that Christians should get it too. This guy was working arm in arm with Biden the whole time. And now... All of a sudden, all of a sudden, now he's condemning him? All of a sudden, now he's bad news. What happened to giving him a chance, Franklin Graham? What happened to give him a chance? I, I, you guys remember this. Some of you may watch me back then two years ago. I said it then. I ain't giving this guy a chance. I know who he is. I know how to call evil out when I see it. And his Biden and his cronies are pure evil. These are people that have sold their soul to Satan. They have no hope. They're not going to repent. Doesn't mean that you can't. They're not. They're that far gone. Give somebody a chance to, what, someone that uh, supports doing what they want to do to the, the little ones, if you get my drift, right? You want to give that a chance? No, I'll pass. Hard pass for me. Hard pass. So I always say this. Be very careful about who you listen to, about who you trust, about who you take direction from, especially when it comes to pastors, faith leaders, anybody in a church. Of course, the politicians, but that goes without saying. At least it should. But in these last days, no, many deceivers are out there. Graham plays both sides of the, you know, he's on both sides of the fence here, right? He'll dip his, he'll dip his toe in here with, you know, on the political side, and then he'll come over here, you know, and go back to the, you know, the Christian side of things, right? He's always lurking back and forth, right around that fence, which we know the devil owns. So I thought that I would just point that out to everybody. These people are not who you think they are. Okay, that's why I, I, I do these videos. I talk about this because it's important for people to know because I know not everybody can follow and keep up with all this news. That's why you have me to do that for you. Because it's all in relation here to the end times. Don't even be surprised if Franklin Graham marches you right over to the, uh, uh, the MOTB, Revelation chapter 13. Just saying, just saying. I will leave it there. I'll put more information here in the description. I'm not done quite yet, though, because I don't leave any video here without giving people the opportunity to receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior. That's you. You're watching right now. You're someone that has not yet accepted Christ into their life. I want to lead you in a prayer right now to get you to do just that. This is a prayer you can do in your own words, but I will give you the steps that you need to bring it before the Lord today. The first thing that you want to do right off the top Acknowledge that you are a sinner. That is something that we all are. But I'll tell you the good news. God gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to die on that cross for the sins of all the world. He died and rose again for you and me. 
He paid the cost. What you have to do is repent of your sin. Repent means to turn from your sin, not just to say you're sorry and then you just jump right back in your old ways again. No, it means to turn from sin, turn from lifestyles, habits, anything in your life that goes against the word of God. If you humbly go before the Lord, though, and you ask him to forgive you, he'll wipe your sin away. And the Bible says he doesn't remember it any longer. Then you invite Jesus into your life to be your Lord and Savior. When you do that, you become born again, a child of God. You will have eternal life. Trust me when I tell you there is no greater decision you will ever make than the one you do to give your life to Christ. I pray you make that decision today. I'll have more on this for you down below. You can let me know your thoughts. Don't forget the links to donate to our ministry are there as well. It is a great blessing if you could help us out. Thank you all so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I'll be back with more. You guys take care. Please be safe out there. God bless each and every single one of you. I'll talk with you soon.